Well, we're back here in a little cove that turns into a creek, a real narrow channel in it. And we were checking this out just to see, you know, what's going on. See if maybe it was something different, uh, that's why we came through here. Tell them a little bit, Mike, like why, why did we pick this area? What were we thinking, you know, and, uh, you know, what, what were we trying to do? Sure, well, what we did is we were looking for a, a creek, something feeding some fresh water into the river. So we saw this on the map and we saw that right beyond the mouth of the creek that there, there was deeper water, five, six feet. And you can see how this really, you know, drops off from a foot or two into almost five feet of water right here close to this point up against the shore. So we wanted to come in here and see, you know, is, is there some kind of cover, uh, wood laid down, some grass, something that, that might draw the bass to these, these spots and isolate them in, into those deeper pockets. Um, really haven't found the, the wood cover or the grass that, that we had hoped to find here. So I, I'd almost eliminate this, this, this water as to something that, uh, that we would fish or, you know, it certainly doesn't hurt to, you know, try it at the right tide and see what happens. But the, the ingredients that we're looking for, you know, three quarters of them just aren't here. You know, I have, I have my Hummingbird 360, my range, set at 80 feet right and so each ring is good for 20 feet so basically you got 20 40 60 80 okay so that kind of gives you you know your, your, your casting area if you will now over here in front of this opening and sort of around the spend a little bit you're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see a bunch of structure you can see some of it starting yep. right here so let's um, there's, there's it's different angles here we're gonna see but you see you see these shadows being created yep. this is all big this is all big pile of junk junk piles um, you know, there, there, there's lay downs in here, there's debris, there's all kinds of stuff. You can see it here, if you look at my rod tip, I'm stuck in it already. And just by, you know, by me coming here and just fishing as I normally would, I found this stuff. What a better image than the Lorance so, spotlight. Yeah, it's there, night and day. It's unbelievable. Night and day different. So, so, so right now I'm looking at this edge, you know, which is our wall. And then I'm looking at this debris that's right here is creating a shadow. And you know, it, it, it allows me to make pinpoint casts, you know, right to... It's on a short true spinnerbait, isn't it? Yep. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Let's see that, Mike. Turn it around this way. Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Come back and see him tomorrow. There's a lot of grass in there, Ben. There was some grass on the flats that just looked so good. A couple different kinds, still fresh and green, you know, coming together in one area, and they just weren't there. Really well out here early in the summer on this side. Yeah. Yeah. Little keeper. Getting ready to end up the day here with Mike Centaur and Mike Ward out here on the Northeast River, pre-fishing for the tournament tomorrow. Ben Warabos is still out there and getting ready to talk to him before we pull out of here. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow down well, at the tournament. Last pass of the day on the Chesapeake Bay. There you go. Uh, down here with Mike Centaur and Mike Ward. Ben Warabos is still up in the creek and getting ready to fish the tournament tomorrow. So we'll see you next time.
down here on the water. Here's Mike. Uh, you remember Mike Centaur? You've seen him win in some tournaments. You've seen him in all the Angler's Choice. And if you fish the Upper Bay or anywhere around here of Potomac, you've seen and heard Mike's name before. Um, we were up on Conowingo the other day doing a little sonar and stuff and uh, talking about Mike just in, has got the uh, insight on Lawrence on his boat too, don't you? Yeah, the spotlight scan. I got two uh, linked HDS Touch 3s, a 12 and a 9. And then I also have a Hummingbird with a 360. Yeah, and uh, and you, that way you got to see how that Hummingbird 360 versus the other one works together. Versus the spotlight scan, yeah. Right. I've, I've had both on and off at different times to look, and then I've had them both on running at different frequencies. And in my opinion, uh, the Hummingbird 360 shows a lot more uh, information, contour, grass versus rock all that kind of stuff. Right. The unique thing about the Hummingbird is you don't have to stand on your trolling motor foot pedal and rock it forward and backwards to get an image because it has its own motor and it constantly pings. So you're always getting a refreshed image. Uh, whereas with the Lowrance, and you know, for, for me, I've, I've grown accustomed to the Hummingbird and I can, I've, I've used it like a major tool. I pull up to a dock that maybe I, you know, normally uh, would fish, and I go to flip a piling, and I look down at my 360, and all of a sudden, there's a tree over there, you know, 10, 20 feet off the dock I never knew was there. Well, that's what Duke Nave was just saying when we were talking to him yep, a few minutes go. ago, that it always helps him, and he said that he, the three fish that he caught today, the three big ones, um, were caught off of, of a tree. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, that he found using his 360 that he wouldn't have known was there and uh, that's how you know he ended up with a good bag today and Absolutely. how he well, won Angler's Choice for sure, the year. Sure, sure. Well, um, when the elites were here for uh, practice I got to spend a day on the water with Chad Pipkins. He also has the Hummingbird 360 and he found stuff down here that I never knew about while he was here for practice by the same way, pulling up to a dock he'd never been to before and finding structure, maybe somebody threw off the dock or, you know, an old pile, set of pilings or, so, you know, having that 360 is really an advantage. Yeah. And like I said, now, you know, if you just have that spotlight scan and you go pulling up to a dock, but you're looking where your trolling motor's going. You're not seeing behind you or next to you or, so that's where that Hummingbird 360 really is. Yeah, and so, so when you have the, the means to, spend the extra money it's definitely worth the extra money definitely but in the meantime the spotlight's going to serve you pretty well until well, you can upgrade to something the else. one thing about the spotlight scan which was you know a benefactor to me was when i purchased my skeeter fx21 i got the limited edition came everything all hooked up but for my front unit to have down imaging I had to run off the back transducer so by purchasing the spotlight scan it's a three-in-one transducer it gives you a high definition sonar, which I believe they call a uh, ping. Um, it has, or I'm sorry, chirp. Chirp. So it has chirp sonar, high definition sonar, which works with the uh, upgraded Lorentz unit. It has down imaging, so instead of looking at the off the back of the boat, now I can look off the trolling motor, and it has spotlight skin. So for the 300 to 500 dollars that they retail for, it's worth it, even if you're not going to use the spotlight skin. It's still worth it. I noticed with the universal sonar and the trolling motor head, I'd go over three to five foot of water and have grass, and my Lowrance would blank out. But with that high definition sonar, it has the power to read through the grass and back again without fouling. 
that's all we that's good to know because these are the that's kind right. of questions that you know people have they haven't really used this the newer electronics yet they're used to the older units and they find it difficult to network them and really understand you know how to best use them to get the be the most out of them and uh, this is the kind of stuff that people really like to know and Absolutely. it helps people out we appreciate it Mike. We're going to be probably using some of these new Lee's custom crankbaits too today along with the Sunline and the Lou's reels and rods really beautiful crankbaits and of course you really can't find a better line than that Sunline or a better reel than Lou's Some fantastic workmanship on the new Lou's reels and rods Well, tell them where we're going to run to now, Mike, and why. Well, what we're going to do now is head back into Broad Creek. And it's a, a pretty good-sized creek that, that runs off the Conowingo Reservoir here. And it uh, has uh, a fair amount of, of, of water in it. You know, it has some deep holes. Um, and a lot of those holes concentrate some of the fish. So we're going to go back in there. We're going to use our electronics, and, you know, uh, take a look at some things and uh, see if we can't produce a few fish back there. Now out, the, out here we found smallmouth and largemouth but they're in balls of bait fish that just fill the graph. You can't basically cannot detect structure whatsoever. I mean it just fills it from top to bottom side to side and they're busting on them but I think that because they have that many bait fish there they don't need to chase a single bait. So you've got to have your bait right in front of them as they're busting because they just gorge and then, you know, lay back down yeah, you, again. you would think, I mean, you, you were throwing a popper, I was throwing a spook, uh, a small jerk bait, and, you know, the fact that we just weren't getting hammered, you know, all the time, just in, from looking at the graph, like you said, there's just so much bait fish there that uh, it was al almost too much. Yeah, almost too much. much. I mean, finally, a college that, that that I would fit in it. I mean, I've been to a lot of colleges, but generally just partying with my buddies. Um, but that's the college. Well, I'm Mike Iconelli said yesterday when we were back at the uh, weigh-in, Mike said, if you don't come and register at the Bass College, he's going to send Cliff Pace and Matt Harron to kick your butt. At, my butt. And kick, our, and kick anybody's butt that doesn't come. Well, I'm going to take Cliff Pace, roll him up real nice, and knock out Matt Heron. No.